Hey guys, welcome back to another filler video until I get the next meme guide done. I won't beat around the bush, but Gaijin fucking added Amrams to the dev server, albeit only in a special event mode to test them out first. Now, I'm going to talk about my initial impressions of the active radar missile testing in game, then my feedback on what Gaijin did wrong and should improve, and what they did right and should keep. Because as bad as the snail is usually, they actually managed to do some things noticeably good this time. Anyways, without further ado, it's time to delve into the new spam ram meta. Well, I launched a am ram at five kilometers against that go. Oh, yeah, my ass is dead. That's a man. I wish I had countermeasures right now. Man, That's the ground. Is... You got me. Owie. Oh, no, not what? I can. If you turn towards me, I'll put a meek on him. Whack his pee pee! <laughs> He's dead. You should have magic, but yeah. <laughs> that, why is that so bad? <laughs> a friendly hammer! <laughs> oh, I thought that was the guy in front of me. He's growling side over their server. He's growling tongue on him. Oh my god, bro. Real right thing. now, we're, I'm just meeking on people. Mikaing on these. No. She add her on my Mika until I am ram. Oh, magic tools. Mm, yeah, a little bit. Oh my goodness, is that a dumbass F16 on the deck? I see. Yeah, I'm about to tickle his balls with a Mika. A hey, shit ass catch. Ah. Uh. Aim 120s. Yes. Does he oh. know? <laughs> that hit you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think he's about to catch it. Does he know? Stop. Uh, Stop turning. I just turn off my fucking radar at this point. Check out the cockpit for the Mirage. Check out your cockpit. <laughs> so true. Freaking what's his- <gasps> That Amram's headed for me! That Amram's headed for me! The voices. Uh. The bells. I don't know what blood is cooking over there. There's an F-16 high somewhere. Uh, oh, there he is, there he is. Fox 3. Lock Fox 3. It's gonna miss. Gonna. There's a Mirage on my ass. Uh, splash. You know what? Fuck him. I'm gonna merge. Nice aim. Oh, yeah. I guess this is a good chance to show off the new Magic 2s. These things got buffed on the dev server, and uh, they're a little. Um, uh, yeah, observe the power of the unnerved Magic 2. It just fucking goes, our 73 status! <laughs> oh my goodness, what? Uh, oh, that's a Mirage? Um, yeah, that's a Mika to the face. Also, why why would I ever spawn a Casio trap? Holy like, just spawn a flanker and hurt people. That is it! <laughs> <laughs> It <laughs> just died. It just died. Uh, I'm flying a wingless. Oh, the, oh, okay. Mika kill from the grave. I'll take that. My spider senses are starting to tingle. Is that uh, a missile rear? Where? It's a friendly. What is this idiot launching at? So, for those of you who have been living under a rock for some reason, don't read dev blogs or check any kind of social media, Gaijin has confirmed that they're adding active radar missiles in the second update of this year, which is going to be the June update. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about how and why the Fox 3s are here already. Gaijin said that they'll conduct a major playtest of the Fox 3s now, to assess how they work in battles full of players compared to just the usual internal testing team they have, which I think is composed of, what, two hamsters and a snail? Anyways, and they want to collect player feedback and data to tweak the missiles accordingly, while also ironing out any bugs and glitches that they might have. And they have quite a few, but we'll get to that in a bit. For this test, six new active radar missiles were added to the dev server. Depending on the country, they added the American AIM-120A AMRAM on the F-16C, the South African A Darter in the British tech tree on the South African Gripen, the Russian R-77 on the MiG-29 SMT, the French Mika EM on the Mirage 2000-5F, the Chinese PL-12 on the JAF, and the Israeli Derby on the F-16D Barak II. These missiles are very obviously far from being finished, and are obviously a heavy work in progress. 
only the most major of differences being modeled. As a matter of fact, all of them except the R-77 right now just use a copy-pasted 3D model of the AMRAAM. Even though the missile itself flies differently, they all just look like the AMRAAM. Which, by the way, itself is not correct. The loadout menu says it's aim 120 a but the texture on the missile says it's aim 120 b Anyways, just like the severe damage mechanic playtest from a few weeks ago, the active radar homing, or ARH missile playtest, is accessible through the events tab. Although only on the dev server for now. You don't need to have the F-16C or the MiG-29 SMT or any of the top jets researched to play this event, since Gaijin wants as many people as possible to play and try them out so they can collect feedback. The only requirement is having a rank 6 jet in any of the aforementioned countries. If you meet that condition, Upon joining a match, the playtest will automatically give you one of the aforementioned planes for that match, depending on the country that you had selected. The provided plane is fully spaded and ace crewed, with a small selection of loadouts, usually being a full Fox 3 loadout, and a loadout that swaps two of them for Fox 2s. The only exception is the JAF, which gets a single loadout of only two Fox 3s and four Fox 2s. The game mode is otherwise a normal game of Air RB, although with a lot more missile dodging and idiots who don't know how to use Fox 3s. And this is where we get into my initial impressions of Fox 3s in this playtest so far. My first impression is, holy shit, please learn how to use these. This isn't even making fun of US mains like my last video, literally every single country I've seen in the game. 90% of the time, people in this game mode will climb to space because haha, new missile, and get ganked by the nearest Pitbull Fox 3 because they didn't start defending until it's too late. And it's even better when these same retards will launch Fox 3s as if they're Fox 1s ignoring the fact that these things have active seekers, and end up sending a Pitbull Fox 3 into the nearest teammate, usually me, after I start defending early. I'ma be real with you, half the missiles I had to dodge during the Fox 3 playtest were friendly missiles, because dumbasses are way too trigger-happy and unaware of how they work. Call this shit the Growling Sidewinder DCS server with how many little kids be team-killing everyone accidentally with their AMRAMs on their shiny new F-16C. But anyways, let's leave the players aside, my main impression came in the balance. As of now, the Fox 3s are all artificially nerfed and are on a very level playing ground. Gaijin seems to have artificially nerfed them into three main categories. The AMRAM and the PL-12 are great at long ranges, but struggle a bit at closer ranges and are prone to going pitbull on the wrong thing up close. Mika EM and Darter seem to be the complete opposite, being more short range oriented with a far lower effective launch range, but having far better seeker and insane maneuverability. I mean, remember, the Mika is a 50G thrust vectoring missile. Anyways, the third category happens to be in the exact middle, with the R-77 and the Derby acting like the middle ground between the missiles we just talked about. Sadly, however, all these missiles are still work in progress, and this is when we get into the bugs and feedbacks of things that Gaijin should fix. For starters, the tracking is utterly fucked on some of these missiles. Even under perfect launch conditions, the R-77 and the Mika will usually have an identity crisis and start to think they're anti-satellite missiles, as they will simply loft too hard and go into space, and then they'll lose track because they're too high or off-angle. And if they don't lose track, they'll attempt a 40G turn to reacquire the target during terminal guidance, sending the already low-energy missiles straight into a flat spin. The AIM-120 and the PL-12 did not have this issue from my testing, while the Derby and the Darter are inconclusive since I didn't play them as much to formulate a fair result. While I successfully got 30 plus kilometer kills with the AMRAM and the PL-12, I was unable to score a hit on anything further than 15 kilometers away with the Mika EM and R-77, either because it wiggles all its energy away and falls out of the sky, or because it sent itself into a flat spin during terminal guidance. The Fox 3 seekers on all missiles as well appear to be artificially nerfed for testing purposes, more than balance, I would guess. All the Fox 3s, regardless of country, are pretty easy to notch with standard defensive flying once they go pitbull. Not that you'd need to do that if you know how to start defending earlier against their IOG. See, 90% of idiots flying in this mode right now are treating the Fox 3s as long-range fire-and-forget missiles, sending off a volley of 6 AMRAMs at 40 kilometers on IOG. In English, the missile flies blind to where it expects you are gonna be, and then it tries to reacquire you with its own seeker at close range. So if you simply... you know turn away and don't be where the missile expects you to be, they're just gonna miss because the radar doesn't reacquire anyone. No chaff or evasive maneuvers are required for this. I found the most optimal playstyle with Fox 3s somewhat similar to what I already do on some DCS servers. That is, 
hugging the deck, not flying in a straight line to confuse the IOG and make long-range pitbulls miss, and using the terrain to my advantage whenever possible. Then, when applicable, pop up at medium to close range and gank anything you see below 20 kilometers, since they usually won't have enough time to go cold or properly defensive. So far in this game mode, applying that playstyle, I found the best Fox 3 slingers to be the Mirage 2005F and the F-16C, running a loadout of 4 Fox 3s and 2 Fox 2s. The incredible maneuverability and radar on these planes allows you to get the Fox 3s off at will, especially with the HMD bore sight for the radar, while defending as well. The incredible Fox 2s make them a force to be reckoned with as well. Did I mention the Magic 2 received a major buff on the dev server? Anyways, the worst plane to fly in this mode is the JAF. You get a max of 2 Fox 3s while all the other countries get up to 6, and you don't even have TWS on your radar for this thing, let alone the latest countermeasures of any kind. And finally, the worst thing I noticed in the playtest that Gaijin needs to fix is the player count, obviously. 16v16 is way too much right now. Assuming a team was taking full Fox 3s, you know, 6 per plane, that's 96 various active radar missiles you need to defend from the enemy team. God help you if you're in a JAF with its horrible energy attention and small amount of countermeasures defending against almost 100 active missiles. Honestly, I don't care if Gaijin doesn't fix the other problems I said, but the player count needs to go down. At least to an 8v8 in my opinion. Currently, this mode has a lot of potential, and even in Chaotic 16v16 it was very fun in my opinion. But due to the insane missile spam right as the game begins, matches end rather quickly, and are a little too chaotic right now for my liking. That's my feedback on what Gaijin should change or fix. To sum it up again, 1. Fix the messed up tracking and maneuvering on Mika, EM, and R-77. 2. Give China a more competent Fox 3 carrier, like the J-10, instead of an overweight MiG-21 with modern avionics, to compete with the likes of the F-16C and the Mirage 2000. Finally, 3. Lower the player count on top-tier Air RB to 8v8 instead of the current 16v16. I guess 4 optional, it's somewhat unrelated but worth mentioning now that we bring up TWS radars a lot, Gadget should start implementing TWS on planes missing it, and properly modeling it on the planes that have it, within reason of course. Now onto the good things that Gaijin did in this playtest, and they should honestly keep. First off, it was an incredible decision by Gaijin to only add Fox 3s to planes with modern RWRs during the playtest, specifically RWRs capable of separately identifying active radar missiles. This gives everyone a more level playing ground when it comes to defending against these missiles. We have many other planes in-game capable of carrying Fox 3s, but their RWRs would make it an absolute nightmare to even face one, let alone defend against it. Second, Gaijin doing this as a playtest for all players is very nice, and collecting player feedback is a very welcomed move. Not to mention, they're doing it on the dev server, where things can be tweaked and updated on the fly without disturbing the live server, so that's really nice as well. Finally, Gaijin's transparency so far with Fox 3s as early as June of last year, and in multiple consequent dev blogs and news posts since then, is greatly appreciated as it keeps the player base up to date on the latest development news for Fox 3s and plans for the game. And there you have it! That's a quick summary of the Fox 3s coming to the game in June, as they're being tested on the dev server right now, along with my first impressions of them. If you're on PC, you can go download the dev server right now from the War Thunder wiki and try them out yourself. Oh yeah, the F1 of War meme guide is almost done, but might have to take a backseat for an F20 video I had planned for ages once this thing comes to the game. Anyways, until next time, don't crash on takeoff, and please go watch a Fox 3 tutorial so you don't end up team killing half your team like the average 14 year old spam ram monkey running his two week free trial on the F16C in that one other plane game. See you next time.